Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Tonight on the fifth night of Jumada, Jumada Thani, 1440, going for Imam Bukhari's book, Al Adab Al Mufrad, a code for everyday living, the example of the early Muslims by Imam Bukhari. Uh, the chapter for tonight is 288, the supplications of the Prophet. Uh, tonight's hadith. Tonight's hadith is number 685. Abdullah bin Umar said, Among the supplications of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the disappearance of your bounty and from the loss of well-being and your sudden, ven- and your sudden vengeance and all of your wrath. Alhamdulillah. Did somebody please? Alhamdulillah. Where is the يهديكم الله سي يهديكم الله يهديكم يهديكم الله ويصلح بالكم ويصلح بالكم 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 Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma narrates that the Prophet sallallahu dua is the following. This is still under the chapter from the dua of the Prophet of Allah. So we had so many duas now from the Prophet sallallahu dua. This is one of them to learn. Very simple, easy, and powerful. All the duas of the Prophet sallallahu is powerful, but sometimes some of the duas they are good and better than others in terms of time-wise and place-wise. This one is for the person who is in prosperity, a person who is living luxury, money, living happiness, living good health. This dua is good for him. O oh Lord, I seek shelter in you. I seek your protection. Min zawali ni'matik. From the disappearance of your ni'mah. Ni'mah whether it's the outward or the inward. All of that is ni'mah. The ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, that he made you to taste the food and enjoy it. The ni'mah of Allah upon you, that he made your legs to walk onto, or the eye to see through with them. All of that ni'mah, and the ni'mah of iman and Islam that Allah has given you, the ni'mah to sunnah, or verily, if you look what the disbelievers and non-Muslim do, you would be saying, Alhamdulillah, that Allah may save me from all of that. And especially for those who are living in an area where there is lots of non-Muslims, they could see, Allahu Akbar, a lot of difference. Pass by some people shouting their head off, putting the music loud, jumping like monkeys. You say, Alhamdulillah, Allah will save me from all of that made me a Muslim, ni'mah from Allah Azza wa Jal. And this ni'mah of the wealth and the luxury and the health and all of that can be disappearing from you. If number one, if you use that ni'mah in the wrong way. So if I use the ni'mah in the wrong way, then that would take the ni'mah away. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Nahl, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرْيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَةً Allah sets you a parable, an example for you to learn and pay heed. A village which was amina, settled, safe, mutma'inna. That means a village which has tranquility, it has peace into it. Ya'tiha rizquha ragadan min kulli makan. The provision comes to that village in abundance, in large quantities from all the places, from every place. So this village used to uh, be in prosperity, in safety, in tranquility. But when it had used that ni'mah against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ When it had, did not show the, express the gratitude regarding this ni'mah, did not use it in the right place, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he did to it, أَذَاقَهَ اللَّهُ Allah Azza wa Jal had gave it, made it to taste libas al ju'i wal khawf and that is al libas the clothes of al ju'a that means hunger 
الخوف الدفير why مما كانوا يصنعون as an outcome for what they used to do second thing that the person needs to know that for the reasons for the ni'mah of disappearance you don't thank Allah for that ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِتَّأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَا إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَا أَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Surah Ibrahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if Lord had given declaration declaration that if you thank Allah for the ni'mah Allah will what? give you more so if you don't thank Allah Allah will give you nothing so you seek refuge in Allah that Allah does not strip you from that ni'mah that you are in whether it is ni'mah that said in money or health all of that ni'mah and this is general because everything that is you are enjoying is a ni'mah from that is a specific ni'mah and there is the second one وَتَحَوُّلْ عَافِيَتِكَ this is a specified from the ni'mah عَافِيَة is the health so العافية that is that to be safe from the illness to save from the diseases that's a crown on top of your head so when the person is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not to swap or replace his sorry status from being healthy to being non-healthy and he did not say here zawali afiyatik he said the hawul the, the, the swapping the alteration the changing the exchanging he did not say that removal the removal of the whole ni'mah but this one is that you're talking about that it to change your health into non-health and that is why we say to the person from the great ni'mah of you Allah is on you that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you wake up in the morning being able to move your limbs to worship Allah properly and do your ibadah properly giving you that tongue just that tongue that made it able for you to remember Allah with it this is what Abu Qilab al-Jarmi, Abu Diyallahu Anha, Rahimahullah, the student of Allah ibn Abbas, when he died, he had nothing functioning with him. No hands, no legs, he hardly hears, hardly can see, only his tongue can say. Alhamdulillah, Allahumma awzi'ni an ahmadaka hamdan, ukafi'u bihi shukra ni'matika allati an'amta biha alay, wa faddaltani ala kathiri mimman khalaqa tafdila. O Lord, inspire me to praise you such a praise to reward or to be an exchange to thank to be thankful to all the grace that you've given me the bounty you've given me and you made me better than other people nothing functioning in him except for his tongue so Allah is giving you that tongue say to Allah Ahmaduka ya ala hadha lisan al lisan this tongue they use it in halal if you use it in haram, if you use it in ghiba, namima, slandering, backbiting, lying, then you are using that tongue into the way that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah may struck you with cancer into it. Imagine. Then he says, قال, The niqmah is the anger of Allah. The niqmah is the disaster. And fajr means the sudden. So you don't want this non-good situation to come to you suddenly. If it becomes gradual, it's better. So not to be having, for example, straight illness. Big one. Only slowly. You don't want to be caught up with something that would leave you to live for a bit short time. And something that would, for example, a total smash for your wealth total burn for your house you don't want to have that so the niqmah you want to be slowly and then he asked the last one all that would lead me to embark upon everything which is haram everything which is forbidden and a sakhat is the anger so it is incumbent upon or cumbered upon the person to avoid all the reason that would bring the, the wrath of Allah upon you you, make, you have to strive to make sure that you are avoiding all reason that will lead to disaster and to lead, that is, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be angry from you. And if Allah is angry from you, you are a loser. You've had it. You've finished. 
And here we could really attribute the sakhat, one of the attributes of Allah. A sakhat means the wrath, the anger, which is suitable to His Majesty. Nothing to be like our anger. Anger, our, our anger, we behave irrational. It's nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Follow the hadith. Chapter 289 Supplication in heavy rain and ordinary rain. Hadith 686 Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a cloud rising from the horizon, he would leave what he was doing, even if he was in prayer, and face towards it. If Allah dispersed it, he praised Allah. And if it rained, he said, O oh Allah, make it a beneficial rain. Again, Prophet ﷺ, when he sees saw a cloud rising from the horizon, he would leave what he was doing, even if he was in prayer, and face towards it. If Allah dispersed it, he praised Allah. And if it rained, he said, O oh Allah, make it a beneficial rain. The supplication when you see the rain. So the rain is one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it could be a disaster. So depending, so if you see a cloud, that cloud could have, mashallah, prosperity, and it could have something which would ruin the whole life of the whole people, flood. So Prophet Sallallahu whenever he sees a cloud, as he sees a rain, he makes a dua. And that dua to make the destiny of Allah regarding this rain to be prosperity, not to be a disaster. Because as I said, the rain either is disaster or is what? Prosperity. So if it is prosperity, if, it, if Allah's messenger is saying, Oh Lord, make it good and beneficial, that means, Oh Lord, not to make it disastrous. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, when the Prophet sallam would see a cloud in the horizon, is about to rise, a cloud is coming to form up together. He would leave whatever he's got. Even if it's to a prayer, that means he will not cut off his prayer. But if he is praying and planning to pray more, if he's praying, for example, let's say, to rak'ah sunnah, another two rak'ah sunnah, he would leave that to sunnah now. More important. He would come towards the cloud and he would look at it. And that, if that cloud dispersed, did not uh, form the rain, then he would praise Allah. That means, alhamdulillah, there's no disaster. He's praising Allah Azza wa Jal, even though that he would have, a person would have wished for rain, true or not? A person would have wished for rain. But even though he would have wished for rain, sometimes the rain is not good. So he would first praise Allah, then maybe that rain would have been disastrous. So he would praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he had dispersed that cloud. And if that cloud had given the rain, he would say, Oh Lord, make it beneficial. Beneficial for everything. Whether beneficial for the land, beneficial for the animals, beneficial for the humans, beneficial for everything. Oh Lord, sayyiban with a sad. That's the proper riwayah, not sayyiban. Sayyiban is not correct. Sayyiban. Allahumma sayyiban nafi'ah. Now, Another hadith from Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, when the Prophet used to see the cloud, he would go forward and come forward, backward. Go forward and come. That means he's, what is, he's in an anxiety. He's not relaxed. And then when it rains, he would be relaxed. And he would say, Allahumma sayyib al nafiyah. Allahumma sayyib al nafiyah. Aisha, she said, Messenger of Allah, when we see the cloud, We'll always be happy. Why we see that when you see the cloud, you are what? Unsettled. He said, Aisha wa yu'minni an yakuna fihi adab. What does guarantee for me that this cloud is bringing what? Adab, punishment. And this is what the kuffar used to do. فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ عَارِضًا مُسْتَقْبِلَ أَوْدِيَتِهِمْ When they have seen this cloud come into their cloud, to come into their light, to their land, what did they say? They said, هَذَا عَارِضٌ مُمْطِرُنَا this is, insha'Allah, this is going to be uh, rain for us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to them, بَلْ هُوَ مَسْتَعْجَلْتُمْ بِهِ It is what? You have hastened the issue regarding it. وَفَرِلِي رِيحٌ فِيهَا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ It's a wind which has a, a, a punishment and severe punishment. So those people who are kuffar, looking at the clouds, 
than looking at the wind pushing the cloud. They thought there is good, and this is going to give us rain. But actually, that was they're they're doomed with it. They're finished with it. So the Prophet of Allah, when he sees the cloud, he's always not subtle. Soon as it rains, he would say, "Oh, Allahumma jalhu sayyib al nafiyah, Allahumma sayyib al nafiyah." Hadith Zayd ibn Khalid in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ after praying the Fajr in Sulh al-Hudaybiyah he prayed the Fajr and it was just after the night which was raining night after that it was a raining night so in the Fajr he prayed and then after he finished the prayer of the Fajr he faced the people he said verily قال الله الله said which is Hadith Qudsi أصبح, الله, أصبح من عباد اليوم Today some of my slaves became believers in me and some became disbelievers in me and some became disbelievers in me believe, sorry أصبح اليوم Today this morning some of my slaves became believers in me disbelievers in the stars and some of them are disbelievers in me believers in the stars the ones who had said regarding the rape the last night the night before the one who had said مُطِرْنَا بِرَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلِهِ We've been given the rain because of the rahma of Allah, because of the great bounty of Allah, because of the blessings of Allah. They are believers in me, in Allah, disbelievers in the stars. But the ones who said بِطِرْنَا بِنَوْئِ كَذَا وَكَذَا We have been given the rain because of such and such star, and such and such star, for verily they are disbelievers in me, in Allah, and believers in the stars. So whenever you find a blessing, you always attribute it to Allah. So many people would say, had it been for the dog in my house, I would have been stolen. <clears throat> That's shirk asghar, akhi. Even though, if you ask that person, is it the dog really? It was the one who Allah made that dog to bark and made that thief to run away. So you attribute to Allah, not to the dog. Had it been for the ducks, our house would have been stolen. Last a long time ago, the ducks when they see human being, what they do, they quack, and the, the, the thief would walk right away. So, a person when he sees the rain, all say, "Mutarna bi rahmatillahi wa fadl." We give him the gift of relay with the what? With the rahmatullah. And whenever he sees the rain, he would say, "Allahumma sayyib al nafiyah." So after the rain, you say, "We've been given the rain from the what? The blessings of Allah." The rain could be disaster. If it's too much in a place, but it could be good for other places. So when the Prophet of Allah one day, he was delivering a khutbah in the Jumu'ah, a Bedouin man came in the masjid. And he said, Messenger of Allah. And he stopped the khutbah of the Prophet Messenger of Allah. Can't we see we are in drought? Sheep are dying. Call upon Allah Azza wa to send us rain. So the Prophet of Allah responded to that. And he start calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal for the what? Rain. Anas radiallahu anhu he says, when he finished the khutbah and we came out, we saw a cloud like a terse. Terse means like a shield passing, coming closer and closer and closer. And it kept raining on us until the following Jumu'ah. Following Jumu'ah, the Prophet of Allah is delivering the khutbah. They don't know if it's the same between man or different between man. Between man are very, very... Uh, you could say, uh, daring themselves unto the Prophet. Messenger of Allah, can't you see the rain is killing us? <laughs> you must ask Allah to take the rain away. Stop it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a man who was a man who was a said the human being has been created that he's fast. He's always reacting fast. Too hot, too cold, too, you know, always like that. Too rainy, not too rainy, too sunny, too hot. <laughs> So he said, he made a, 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 a dua, O oh Lord, not to stop the rain. He said, Hawalayna wa la alayna. Ad al akami wal adrab. On the mountains. Because other people are in need of it. Onto the mountains, onto those lands which have no rain. On us, we had enough rain. So the rain, as soon as he said it, the cloud, so the, as soon as he said the dua, cloud dispersed and the rain is finished. And as he said, as soon as we left the khutbah, there was no rain. The cloud dispersed and went away. Coming to the following hadith. Chapter 290. Supplication for death. 
hadith 687 Qais said I came to Khabab when he had been Khabab Khabab when he had been cauterized seven times he said if it had not been that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had forbidden us to pray for death I would have done so to supplicate when the person is about to die this chapter tells us that Imam al-Bukhari is not saying it's not allowed or it is allowed it's just saying what is the hukum, the rule regarding making dua, supplication when the person dies here supplication is to what? to ask Allah Azza wa to kill you Oh Lord, I've had it. Finish me. Kill me. Make me to die. I don't want to live anymore. Is this allowed? The Khabab, he's been cauterized, you know, branded seven times. He was in pain. So much pain, he said. Had it been, I heard the Prophet of Allah forbade us from calling. For death, I would have called for death. He was so much in pain. So the Prophet ﷺ, he prohibited us to call for death when it is to do with the dunya, أخي. not to do with the what? Akhirah. For the deen is different. For verily, from the hadith that we've learned from the Prophet ﷺ, he said from his dua. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ بِقَوْمٍ فِتْنَةً وَأَنَا فِيهِمْ فَقْبِضْنِي إِلَكَ غَيْرَ مَفْتُونَ And if you intended, O Lord, to put people into fitna, trouble, tribulation, and I'm amongst them, O Lord, make me to die before that fitna takes place. Do you understand that? So I'm asking for the death, for the deen. Prophet ﷺ said, لَا تَقُومُ السَّاعِ I will not take place until the person passes by a grave of another person and he would say i wish i am in there inside you inside that grave instead of you it's not because he loves to meet allah it's because of the fitna around him do you understand that what does that hadith tells us that is allowed to wish for the death if you want to meet what allah. it's not because you want to get rid of the pain or because you are in disaster, or emotional sort of upheaval, whatever. It's for the sake of Allah. So, this, the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, regarding this, that a person he would have wished at the end of the time because of tribulation, fitan. I wish I was still there. What did Maryam, she said when she got pregnant? I wish it was not born to be with this people seeing me pregnant. Huh? Well, I don't have a husband. So the death wish that is not allowed is the one that the kuffar they do. He's sick of his life. Life it means nothing. He got had it. So he want to throw himself. And that's something that you could see it in the non-Muslim countries, in numbers. Even the one who's got more freedom, which one is it, Sweden? Or is it Austria? Oh, Sweden, I think. Sweden. Got the freedom of everything. You are free to do anything you like. Yet, the rate of suicide is the highest in the country. So if you have, do whatever you like, yet why do you commit suicide? There's something wrong there. I've heard as well, I don't know if it's true or not, that uh, there's companies there, they would uh, say to you, if you want to commit suicide, tell us. And uh, we'll give you the right thing that you want to do. If you want to drown, you want to be burnt, you want to be sh injection, and, you know. Give us your money, we'll give you the most. You just fill up the, you know, the application form, and we'll give you the most relaxed one. I don't think it's allowed in this country. <laughs> I was Googling it out just to see if it's true or not. Please, if you find one, tell me about it. Companies that would facilitate suicide. They call it assisted death. Assisted death? 
Okay, okay. So this is not okay. That's good. Is that right? Is that, this, these people, is there? There is. Not in this country. It's not legal in this country yet. 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 <laughs> yeah. So in some countries, there's legal. We'll help you to die. Just tell us. <laughs> it's funny, but these people are this. This is the life. This is the life. When you don't have deen, Alhamdulillah, ala ni'mati deen. Wallahi, we are in happiness. They don't know about it. This. We are happy. These people, they're not going to be happy until keep themselves busy 24 hours. Work. He's not in work and he's got free, free time. He has to drink. If he doesn't drink, he'll kill himself. He's either drunk or working. His money has to keep busy, busy, doing something. Or in a holiday. He has to be busy, busy, busy. If he sits on his own, the emptiness in his soul makes him commit suicide. So you're in happiness. Allah knows best. Have you got your wife there? Oh, Alhamdulillah. Because you don't have any speakers. Prophet ﷺ said, لا يتمنى ينا أحدكم الموت None of you to wish death. But let's say you're in disaster, like Khabab, you are in pain. So what you should do? قال فإن كان ولا بد فاعلا If he has to do it, then let him say, اللهم أحيني ما كانت الحات خيرا Oh Lord, let me live as long as life is good for me. وتوفني ما كانت الوفاة خيرا لي And make me to die if death is good for me. That's the maximum you can say. But not to say it now. Allahumma ahini ma. No. Because if you are now not in pain, to live is better than not to live. The longer life you have, it's better. So if you are doing hasanat, more hasanat. You're doing salah, more salah. And if you're doing sins, then it's more time for you to repent. So both ways. If you're doing hasanat, you'll be doing more hasanat. So don't ask for your lifetime to be shortened. The better person is the one who's got longer life, as the Prophet said, longer life and more good deeds. So the two people who died, one is a martyr and one who died later on was not a martyr. Which went into paradise according to the hadith of Talha? The one who was what? Died through normal way, but a year after. A year after. Yet the martyr, who we know is a martyr in the battle, he entered paradise after. Why? Because that person who lived for one year longer, he had prayed a one year prayer. He fasted another Ramadan. He made more hasanah. He had paid more zakah. All of that. So why should you ask for Allah to shorten your life? So the Prophet Sallallahu he says, لا تمنى ينا أحدكم نعم. Another hadith. None of you to wish for death. فإن كان محسنا if he was to be a good person فَلَعَلَّهُ أَنْ يَزْدَادَ خَيْرًا Maybe he will increase in goodness. وَإِنْ كَانَ مُسِيئًا And if he was to be a, a sinful person, فَلَعَلَّهُ يَسْتَعْتِمْ Maybe he will uh, ask for repentance, and that would be good for him. <coughs> Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, the Salaf, all of them, whenever they want to wish the death, they wish the death in the time for the deen. For the deen, they will wish for the death. Umar al-Khattab, the Salaf, Prophet of Allah, when he had been given the choice, what did he say? مَلَا <laughs> طيب. Go into the following chapter. Chapter 291. The supplications of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hadith 688. Abu Musa said, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make this supplication: "O oh Lord, forgive my errors and my ignorance and my excess in all my affairs, and what you know better than me of these things. O oh Allah, forgive all my errors." What I do intentionally, or out of my ignorance, or in jest, and all that I do. O oh Allah, forgive me my past and future sins, what I conceal of them, and what I divulge. You are the one who brings matters forward, and the one who sets them back. You have power over everything. If you look, first of all, this hadith 689 and 688 are together the same. Yes? <coughs> If you look, the last part of 688 to 699 is actually is the same as 674. If we look at 674, so 70, not 4, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, not 674, 673. You look at the last part of it, is it 673. It's the same thing. Okay, yes? So we explained that part, alhamdulillah, before. Can you see 673? Isn't it? Same part, last. 
Yes? Yes. Okay, we explained that. If you remember, Allahumma anta al muqaddim anta al muakhir. By the way, this hadith talks about, O oh Lord, forgive for me my ignorance, my transgressions, and everything, and all my matters, whatever you know about me, uh, more than me. O oh Lord, forgive me all the sins, whether it is I am deliberate, or whether I am joking, and all of that, I do it. O oh Lord, forgive for me what I've done before and what I'm doing now. And whatever I've hidden and whatever I've openly did, for valid, you are the one who can forward and delay. That means you are the one who has the, 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 the best option, maybe to forgive this before that one. Or some of the scholars they said, you are the one who put people to the paradise and the people to delay them from paradise. And the correct opinion is actually the first one, is that you are the one who has the best, op the best decision regarding which one you should put forward to forgive and which one you should delay not to forgive. وَأَنْتَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ You are the one who is able to do everything. And this hadith, as I said, explained it before. So we go into hadith 690. Hadith 690. Mu'ad bin Jabal said, The Prophet wasallam took my hand and then said, Mu'ad, I said, at your service. He said, I love you. Allahu Akbar. I said, and by Allah, I love you. He wish. He, he said, wish that the Prophet was saying to you, I love you. He said, the Prophet I... is saying to Mu'ad, I love you. Listen to him, you just didn't get Prophet is saying, I love you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, he said, shall I teach you some words to say at the end of your prayer? I replied, yes. He said, say, Oh Allah, help me to remember you and thank you and to worship you in the best manner. Prophet Wasallam. He takes hold of Mu'adh ibn Jabal and she says to him, I love you. To show you that if you love a person, tell him. But don't tell him in front of everybody. Brother, I love you in the sake of Allah. What is this? He's showing off. So if you have, for example, a shaykh whom you listen to, I love you for the sake of Allah from the back. I said, yeah. Between you and him. And the person who is being loved by that person, he says, Habbak Allah. May Allah love you just like the way that you love me for his sake. That's the reply. Habbak Allah, alladhi ahbabtani min ajli. I love you for the sake of Allah. And I love you just like Abu Idris al Khawlani when he saw Mu'adh ibn Jabal, this person. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, exactly this person, whom the Prophet said, I love you. Abu Idris al Khawlani, he had seen him in the Masjid of Hims. And he was the head of the companions. At that time, there was 30 companions, he's the head of them. And, can I ask for a chair, is it possible? Because I'm not sitting properly. If it's possible, I can sit on a chair. And then I would sit here, inshallah. Can I just sit here, because I will be too high on you. Unless you accept it, because I'm going to be... Do you accept me being this here? Yeah, of course, of course. I'm not a king, by the way, but... Because <laughs> my, my, my back is not really helping me. I'm up on a pulpit now, my shot. <laughs> it's because of the window, I like the, uh, I like the heat. Five. Abu Yudhis al-Khawlani, he entered the Masjid of Hems and he saw 30 companions talking to each other. Whenever they differ or they are in dispute regarding a matter, they refer to this person. Ad'aj. Barak of Thanai has got his eyes are really shining. His hair is curly. And then after that the whole circle is just left. He went home and he was telling himself off. I was in the masjid and I saw thirty companions and I don't know the name of any of them. The people they know the you know the football players. Huh? I don't know anything. He was telling himself off. So the following day he went as early as possible to the masjid. <coughs> in order and hoping that he would see those people. He did not just see these people, he saw the head of those people, who was the one that he referred to him. So he was so in praying, and he was before him. He was already before that man, and before Abu Idris. So he said, I prayed next to him. 
And after the prayer we sat, and I'm not talking to him, and he's not talking to me. Then he couldn't really hold himself. He said to him, I don't love you for the sake of the dunya. I don't love you because of a relationship I've got with you. I only love you for the sake of Allah. <coughs> so he said, he dragged me from my cloak. And he said, Allah, by Allah you say, are you? Throwing them in the yes, brother. Allah, Allah, by Allah. He said, Abshir, I'm a glad time. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, the ones who love one another on the day of resurrection, they will have pulpits of light that even the prophets and the martyrs are happy with it. That means they haven't got it. The ones who love one another in the sake of Allah. They sit with one another in the sake of Allah. They talk to each other in the sake of Allah. They visit one another for the sake of Allah. Only for the sake of Allah. He was really happy, but he forgot to ask us his name. Then he left. So another person came, and that is, he said, you know, that man I just asked him, the one that you referred to whenever you dispute last night, yesterday, I've asked him about any claims as a hadith, so and so and so and so. He said, yes, he only tells you the truth. But I do have another hadith, which is even better. What is that? He said, Allah said, because I'm an upgrade now. Hadith Qudsi. Another prophet said, Allah said, Prophet said, Allah said, Wajabat mahabbat. My mahabba, my love is incumbent for those who love one another for my sake, visit one another for my sake, talk to each other for my sake, yet sit with another for my sake. Allah. Who are you? He said, Ubad al Musan. And that one they used to refer to, the one who said, he said to him, I love you for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of dunya. He said, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. That's the one. Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Prophet of Allah got to him and he said, Inni uhibbuk. I love you. So he said, Very well. Messenger of Allah, Wa ana wallahi uhibbuk. And I, by Allah, love you. I'm asking, which one is the love of one of them is more than to the other? Can you tell me, please? Which one of the two, Prophet of Allah or Mu'ad, he loves the other more than the one who loves him? Which one loves the other more? Is it the Prophet of Allah loves Mu'ad more than Mu'ad loves Prophet of Allah? Do you understand what I'm saying? Which one? Yeah. Huh? I think Prophet's love is more than Mu'ad. You think Prophet of Allah loves Mu'ad more yeah. than Mu'ad loves the Prophet? No one can beat him in these things. Do you have an option not to love the Prophet of Allah? <laughs> Do you? There's no option. For you, I could hate you, but I can't hate the Prophet of Allah, can I? I only love the Prophet of Allah. There's no option. Well, when you know this hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, then you know which one is more loving to the other. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that whenever two people love one another, the best of them is the one who loves the other more. Whenever two people love one another, ما تحب رجلان في الله إلا وأفضلهما كان أشد صاحبه حبا. The one who loves his brother more, he is better. So he was more. Prophet of Allah. And then I said to you, there's no other option regarding Mu'an except to love the Prophet of Allah. He doesn't have to say I love you because he can't be. He could be a kafir. He doesn't love the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He'd be hypocrite. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Because of he love him, you always give something that to the lover that he's, you know, it is something special for you. So the Prophet gave him something special, which we learnt it from him. Shall I teach you words that if you say them, that you should say that you do say them in the end of the prayer. At the end of the prayer, lots of adkar. But this one is a special. You say after each prayer, each prayer. He says, he says uh, what is it? He said, yes. Um, what did he say? Sorry. Allahumma uh, inni, because I'm looking at which hadith. Allahumma inni, he said, yes, teach me, Messenger of Allah. He said, Allahumma inni, oh Lord, help me. 
A'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Dhikrika, that means to help me to remember you. Wa shukrika, to express my gratitude to you. Wa husni ibadatika, to perfect my worship to you, O oh Lord. So dhikrika, that means includes Quran and looks dua and O oh Lord, help me to make dua properly to you. O oh Lord, help me to recite Quran for you. O oh Lord, all that, dhikr. Shukrik. Oh Lord, help me to make sure that I will express my gratitude to the ni'mah. Otherwise, the ni'mah will go away from me. Remember the bounty? So, oh Lord, help me to thank you for this ni'mah in order that ni'mah is not going to be disappeared. And wa husni ibadatik to be the ultimate ihsan. That when I do my ibadah, I perfect it, whether it's wudu and ruku', sujood, khushu', heart wise, outward wise, everything. Help me, oh Lord. So, you're seeking the help of the Almighty. For you to worship him properly. You're seeking Allah to worship Allah. You understand me? You're seeking Allah to thank Allah. You're seeking Allah to help you to remember Allah. SubhanAllah. So that is the dua that the Prophet then taught to Mu'adh. Now Mu'adh, in another hadith, it says, Usika Mu'adh. I prompt you, O Muhammad. Do not let leave every time you pray following. <coughs> so every time you pray, you say what? Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa Don't forget that. So he said to him, O seeker Muhammad, I prompt you, O Muhammad. Don't leave those following words. Do you think Muhammad would forget to say them in the, after the salah? Uqba ibn Amir al-Juhani radiyallahu anhu One day he sees the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He takes hold of his hand Messenger of Allah told me about salvation How to get myself away from the helper? How can I go to paradise? He said Amsik alayka lisanak Hold your tongue Keep it in check Qal wa lisa'ka bayitu And keep your hands Wabki ala khati'atik And we took over your sins Following day Prophet of Allah, he saw Uqba, he took hold of his hand. It's the other way around. And he says to him, Uqba, shall I inform you of the three great surahs which were mentioned in the Torah, in the Quran, Jeel, and in the Zabur, in the Quran al Adim, Furqan al Adim? He said, Yes, my Senior of Allah. May Allah make me a ransom for you. That means you are the best in me, in my life. So, he said, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Oh, Uqbah, don't forget them. And don't forget to sleep at night except that you say them. So what did he say, Uqbah? He said, I never forgot them. Since the Prophet Allah told me, don't forget them. I never slept at night without reciting them. So what you do? <laughs> قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ لَهُ الصَّمَنْ قُلْ أَوْرَ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَوْرَ الْنَّاسِ Same thing three times. I do that. Don't forget a night. Now, he said, I never what? Slept a night without this happening. I never forgot them. These are the companions. Mullah ibn Umar. He says, I've heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, مَا حَقُّ مْرِئٍ يَبِيتُ لَيْلَتَيْنِ وَعِنْدَهُ شَيْءٌ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُسِيَ فِيهِ إِلَّا وَصِيَةٌ نُقْتُبَةٌ عِنْدَ رَاسِهِ It is not, it's incumbent upon the Muslim that if he's got something to bequeath that his will is written already and ready underneath his head he should not sleep two nights, two nights before his will, his will be written and ready so Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Wallahi, well, since I have this I did not sleep even one night not two nights, one night until my what? My will be ready underneath my head. Then Sayyid Imam Muslim, on the authority of Nu'man ibn Sal, on the authority of Amr ibn Aws, on the authority of Ambassad ibn Yabi Sufwan, on the authority of Um Habiba, on the uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man salla thalatay ashra of raka. He who prays twelve raka, bana Allahu lahu bihinna baytu fil jannah. Allah will build for those twelve raka in the day, on the night, will build in a house in paradise. 
Um Habib of the Prophet said, I never left those 12 rak'ahs since I heard them from the Prophet Then her brother Ambassad ibn Yusuf said, I never left them since I heard them from Um Habib. And then Amr ibn Aws said, I never left them since I heard them from Ambassad. And then al Nu'man said, I never heard them, I never forgot them, I never left them since I heard them from Amr ibn Aws. Look at that. This is the chain of narrators. Soon as they hear something, they implement it. Not like us, we now learn, they don't do this. We take this, we don't do it. And there's going to be hujjah upon us on the day of resurrection. How can you just learn something you don't implement it? Simple. After the prayer, Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Tayyip. 691. Hadith 691. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari said, a man said in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ, Praise be to Allah with pure, blessed and abundant praise. The Prophet ﷺ asked, Who said that? The man was silent, thinking that it was a reprimand from the Prophet ﷺ for something which he disliked. He said, Who was it? He said, Nothing incorrect. The man spoke up. I did, and I hope for good by it. He said, by him who holds my soul in his hand, I saw 13 angels racing each other to see which of them would take it to Allah, the mighty and exalted. This hadith was narrated in Sayyid Bukhari, which is more to it, where it says that we were praying behind the Prophet ﷺ one day on the authority of Rifa'a ibn Rafi'a. Radiallahu anhu, he said we were praying one day behind the Prophet ﷺ. And when the Prophet of Allah lifted up his head, Sami Allahu liman hamida. A man behind the Prophet ﷺ, he said those words, which are Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. After he says, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. Kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yardha. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man sahibu al-kalima. Who is the one who spoke these words? We understand from this that if the person somehow one day or he did, for example, while he's praying or like his dua, he raised up his voice without making any disturbance to others, it's allowed. Do you understand me? Okay. So if it happens, like for example, the Prophet Allah sometimes in his, in his salah, dhuhr or asr, he raised up his voice in the recitation in order to make the people hear what he's reciting. Okay. But if it's going to be causing disturbance, if you are next to the person, he's you don't know even what he's saying. <laughs> but from <laughs> and irritates you. Because it's ba ba ba. There's no such thing for ba ba ba. Either you speak properly or you know what I'm saying, you you say. Or you just say it quietly. But ba 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 ba, there's no one you ask for ba ba ba. True or not? There's people like this. What did? Chewing something. True or not? I can't hear what you're saying. You're nice, you're saying. Allah, I hear this is not right. And irritates the people. And people ask me, please talk about it. I can't even concentrate in my prayer. Because of this person. Like this. Especially if he's got some chocolate in his mouth. Or some milk. Or, you know. So his tongue is sticking. Allah <laughs> must so this man, he had raised up his voice with this dua. This dua had never been heard. At the time of the Prophet Wasallam, you could do it and the Prophet Allah would have told you, what are you doing? Or it's correct. But now you can't because there is no Prophet to say to you, this is halal, it's haram. We have to abide with what has been said. So who has said it? So the man went, what? Quiet. He's scared. <laughs> he thought he's done up something wrong. So the Prophet Wasallam, he said, who is it? He did not say anything wrong <laughs> to make him feel comfortable. It's not I'm gonna, you know, sort of tell him off. God, in another narration, he said, did not, he, he did not say except for right. In another narration, he said, he did not say wrong. He did not say wrong. Don't worry. So as soon as the man, he felt safe, the man, he said, it is me. I'm asking, look at the companion of Wayu, respecting the privacy of that man. Did he mention his name? Privacy. Because we're not concerned who is that man. We're concerned about what? The hadith, the story. The privacy of that man is not being mentioned. I'm sure he's not known. He's no companion. Khalas. 
You don't need to know who his name. I don't gotta go dig deeper because I, I'm concerned is that approved or not by the Prophet of Allah. But the man he said, not just it, I messenger of Allah, I and I hoped that I, you know, that I would gain good with it. <laughs> yes, I, I would gain good with it. Right. If he had uh, said it and he gained good for it and he was 100% correct, would it have been hesitated to say it is me? Would he hesitate? So his hesitation shows what? And what he's done is what? Oh, Do you understand that? That's, this, is the, this is how we look at the hadith prophet to advance. Because what he's done is not supposed to do something without the authority of the Prophet of Allah. So what he's done is wrong. But because the Prophet of Allah, he said, nothing wrong. Just tell me who it is. Because sometimes the Prophet of Allah said to the person who left the Fajr, was reciting the Fatiha. So the Prophet said, who is reciting with me? He said, me, Masjid. I've been dragged from my recitation. I can't concentrate. So the people stop reciting. Even the Fatiha. When the Prophet of Allah is reciting what? Loud recitation. So, this is in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, when he said, who said it? Is always what? To condemn. Like for example, why am I Hakim Sulaim? He was in the prayer. And somebody had sneezed. He said to him, May Allah praise, you know. May Allah have mercy upon you. So, the companions, all of them, they looked at him. <laughs> what? They didn't say to him, he was, what? He was scared. He said, May my mother lose me. What have I done? He's still in the prayer talking. So he did that like this. He went quiet. I'm asking. The Prophet of Allah, doesn't he know who is behind him or not when he's praying? After he finished the prayer, he said, He called me. So he's coming now. <laughs> he must have done something wrong because he said, When they did like this, I went quiet. He was really scared. When he went there, so the Prophet of Allah told him off, but in a nice way. He said, Verily, this prayer is not fit for the talk of the people. May my mother lose me and all of that. It's a prayer. It's only for recitation of the Quran, for dhikr, for dua, all of that. So he said, Wallah, bi abi ummi, bi abi huwa wa ummi. I sacrifice my father and my mother for his sake. I've never seen a teacher better than him, whether before or even after. Best teacher. He did not tell me off, he did not yell at me like the companion. Oh, well, didn't do anything. But just told him, this is not right. It's not correct. And who told us this hadith? He himself. If we didn't know from him, we can't know the hadith. Nobody spoke to the Prophet. Nobody heard the Prophet speaking to him except for himself. Do you understand? He's the one who told us. And he's not worried to tell you guys that I have done this and I said, Ya Allah, may my mother lose me and all of that. If it was you, I'll hide it. I'm not going to tell people about myself. But this is a knowledge. We learn from it, alhamdulillah. So this person, he said, I hope good with it. I mean, my intention was good. But even though what he's done is wrong. So the Prophet ﷺ said, By the one in whose hand is my soul. I have seen, say, say 13 angels. 13. Yeah. 13 angels, our Sheikh al Albani says that this narration, 13, is non authentic. The hadith which is authentic regarding this is bid'atun wa thalathun. That is 30 plus. Not 13, 30 plus. And that's the non authentic narration. You'll find that in Silsila. So if you find that in the Sunan Abi Dawood uh, of the Shaykh al-Albani rahmatullah alayhi So he said, I have seen 30 plus on the angels They are racing one another, which one is going to write it first? SubhanAllah You've got your angel here writing everything And other angels trying to write him down as well Which one is going to be writing him first? This word رَبَّنَا وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ حَمْدًا كَثِيرًا طَيِّبًا مُبَارَكًا فِيهِ كَمَا يُحِبُّ رَبُّنَا وَيَرْضَى and which one is going to write it first? Had Ra'ayt, the Prophet has seen 30 angels plus, يَتَّدِرُونَهَا أَيُّهَا يَكْتُبُهَا أَوَّلًا It means racing one another. Prophet saw them, tried to take that word. And by the way, this is not really uh, something that is strange for you. The, 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 the angels, they do have between them a race to the best deeds. 
And also they, for example, remember the story of the person who killed 99, then he killed 100. Two groups of angels were in this seat. Angel of the fell power and angel of the power of that. He's ours. Well, he's ours. And each one said, ours, ours. So the angel as well, no, it's ours. I think he's done, killed a hundred. He's going to Jannah? I'm Jannah. Hellfire. No, 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 he repented to Allah, to Jannah. You remember the story. And also the Prophet he said, Allah said to him, O oh Muhammad, do you know what the Mala'i al-A'la yakhtasimuna fi? Do you know what the highest inhabitants that are in dispute of? They are in dispute. The, uh, the, 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 the angels are in dispute with one another. Regarding what? The Prophet said, I didn't know. Hadith Khtisam al Malay Al-A'la. The very long hadith. He said, which is for the, the, the rewardable acts. Fil kafarat. Isbag al wudu. Isbag al wudu. Ihal al makar. And makathar al khutayr al mashayr al masajir. So, Khtisam al Malay Al-A'la. It's called Hadith al Khtisam al Malay Al-A'la. There's a book about it. Which is a hadith of the highest companions that are in dispute. Which is the most rewardable act? Okay, coming here to the last hadith. I'll tell you what. Stop here, inshallah. Just here, 691. 692, okay? For next two weeks' time. 692 will give you the question and answer now. And by the way, you could see now that the, the, the author, Imam al Bukhari, had gone back again to the same title, which is what? Min da'awati Rasulullah sallam from the supplication of the Prophet. He sent him so many ahadith and he went back again to the da'awat of the Prophet. Now I'll repeat again. Whenever there's a dua general and you say it, you raise up your hands. When it is a specific dhikr to specific something, like in the entrance to the toilet, you don't say Bismillah, Allah man ya'u bi tamu khufi wa when you make intercourse with your wife, you don't say Bismillah, Allah majidim ma shifar, ma shifar, ma shifar, you and your wife like that. No. When you enter the masjid, you don't say Bismillah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa tahbir, wa rahmat. You don't do that. When you make the adhan, you don't say Allahumma rabbal al-da'u, ta'amu salat al-qayu, you don't say Bismillah. But it's general, you make general, O Lord. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik. The same dua I just said now. Wa tahawwali ni'matik. وفجاءتي وفجأتي نقمتك وجميع صحتك يريدك يا أخي. okay. نعم. طيب. any questions? what's the time by the way? no. no. I could see that. نعم. تفضل. because we are not Arabic speakers and we learn du'a and we look at the meaning as well. after some time maybe we forgot the meaning. but we are still making the du'a because we memorized it. so if we don't know the meaning and we are making a dua because we had it, we learnt it from somebody. If we said the dua without understanding it, are we going to be rewardable for it? Of course you're going to be rewardable. Are you going to be rewardable as much as the person who knows the meaning? Of course not. You're not a parrot. Parroting the dua is different from understanding what you say. So we don't want to be like those people who recite the Quran just for the sake of melody or music. You know, Sam, for the sake of understanding what is in the Quran and then the third stage to implement it. So recitation, then understanding, and then implementation. But we stuck to the recitation without the understanding. What's, what's the point? So if I told you, for example, you need to pass a test, and the test is in German language. Don't you want to know, to learn the language and understand it? Or just to understand how to speak it? So you can say, Krach, Krach, Krach. <laughs> but you don't understand shrach, shrach, shrach. You're not going to pass the exam. Unless you know, shrach, shrach, shrach. what does it mean? By the way, it's not German. I'm making up things. I'm just saying to you that you need to understand the language. So in order for me to test, pass the test, I need to understand what I'm saying. So when I say, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaitan, jannibna shaitan, I need to know what it's meaning, what I'm saying. So, uh, 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 is Allah going to give me that protection from my son if he's going to be born I said this dua before I said it. Well, inshallah. Are you going to get the same reward as a person who knows it? Of course not. You will not. And of course, you need to, well, to implement it. So when I say this dua as well, I need to make sure that I'm doing it halal. So if I'm going to do my wife, and then I'm doing it in the back, haram. Can I say this dua? Yeah. Billah. 
Allah na jannah na shaitan na jannah and enjoy it from the haram. How can you do that? You can do the halal way. So you go into the toilet to go and fornicate. Bismillah, Allah minna bin khudu wa khabar. You go and fornicate in the toilet, you say the dua of the toilet. What does that work? You're playing around and your person, you know, is asking, uh, I'm going to go to journey, <coughs> traveling. How much, uh, what is the, the prayer of the travel? Two rakah. What are you doing there? I'm, I'm meeting a woman there. <laughs> <laughs> See what the two for what is the two rakah for rakah? Allah <laughs> Musta'an. There are people like this. What the two rakah for rakah? <laughs> but he wants to go on fornication. His journey is fornication. What is this? فمن كان فمن هاجا إلى الله يرد فوزة الله يرد. We say ما قلش تو الله رد is ما قلش تو الله رد مثلاً. But if he's making hijrah for dunya or a woman and his hijrah to wherever he has made hijrah to. Now, it's not related to the lesson. My brother's asking, um, is it permissible to join the Asr with, after Jummah? You know, like when you join the Salah before an Asr, can you join Asr with Jummah? Joining the Asr with the Jummah is in difference and controversial, but the correct opinion you could make the combination as long as your Jumu'ah was after the beginning of the Dhuhr. That means you're doing the Asr in the time of the Dhuhr. If your Jumu'ah was correctly done, by the way, before the Dhuhr and ended up before the Dhuhr, you cannot join the Asr to it. It has to be within between Dhuhr and Asr. Because Jumu'ah, you could do it as early as 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock in the morning. You finish 10 o'clock and go by. I don't think ever people done it. Not there is. There are. The ones in the universities. Before that, <coughs> they, they know the fiqh. So they know, for example, in the library, they've got a break. You could do halal. In that case, they can't do the what? The asr combination. Because that has to be the dhuhr started. If the dhuhr started by the finishing of the Jum'ah, you yeah, no problem. It just came to my mind now something regarding this issue of how can the person go and make shooting of the prayer yet he's going for fornication on the other billah. That this person, he came to the Sheikh and he asked him, Sheikh, uh, I have made zina. He said, Astaghfirullah, la hawla wa nafik. It's haram, yeah. He said, what is that? He said, and, well, and I actually made her to be pregnant. On top of that? So why don't you make the fornication without making, you know, the child, you could just, you know, put your ejaculation outside. He said, I've, I've been told that it is makro to put ejaculation outside. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I said? Makro, al azim makro. So it is true, by the way. It is this light to ejaculate outside. So he said, it is being narrated to you, this light to ejaculate outside, but never been narrated to you to put it inside as haram. Subhanallah. What are you talking about? Now, this is in the, in the books of the shiukh, the, the scholars. How these people come to the... Now. Um, you know the hadith of Mu'ad? Yeah. 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 But if you said it for the Sunnah, I cannot really stop you. Only the Fard. Do what I call the Salah, it means the Fard. If you did the Sunnah, strong opinion as well. Now. What's the correct opinion of the second Jama'ah? So if you, first Salah in the Masjid is finished, then you can go back to the congregation. What's the correct opinion of the pay? The congregation? Congregation of prayer. Can we make a congregation after the congregation? If it's not a masjid, musalla, no problem. It's a room in the masjid, in the, in the, in the hotel, room in the university, some musallas with no imam, ratib, prayer behind the imam, no problem, jama'ah after jama'ah. But in the masjid, is a controversial. The correct opinion, obviously, it's not allowed. It's not correct. Imagine we have a jama'ah now. Can we teach? The jama'ah is finished, another jama'ah came. Can we teach? A third jama'ah came in. 50 jama'ah. You know, in our masjid in our country, 
between Dhuhr and Asr, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm not exaggerating. Wallahi, more than 20 jama'at. And if it's during the summertime, it's a bit longer, you'll find about 40 jama'at. So, what is that? What is this? Jama'at after a jama'at. So if I'm going to implement the hadith of the Prophet the Prophet of Allah, he said, I almost made a person to lead the prayer. It means a jama'ah. And me and some group of people to go and search for those people who do not come to the jama'ah. And burn their houses with fire. So they collect some wood and go to those houses. They knock on the door. Why don't you come to the jama'ah? Oh, Messenger of Allah, I'm going to come to the 40th jama'ah after the jama'ah. Yeah, I can't burn your house. There's no, this hadith is not going to function. <laughs> I'm going to come to the 39th Jama'ah, O Messenger of Allah. What is this? Hadith is not going to work. That's not correct. And the only hadith they hook themselves to is the hadith which is narrated authentically in Muslim and Ahmad that after the Prophet had finished his prayer, a man came in and he did not come to the Jama'ah, so the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ala min rajulin yatasaddaqu ala hadha. And be a man to go and give sadaqah to this person. So Abu Bakr, he gave him the sadaqah by praying behind him. Sadaqah, what is a sadaqah? Who gives the sadaqah? A rich or a poor? Rich. So when you find a Jama'ah, a Jama'ah, person who never came to the first jama'ah and another one who came from jama'ah and all of them are poor who wh where is the one who's giving sadaqah to the other all of the poor in that sense is abu bakr is the rich he prayed the jama'ah and he's the only one if it was something good then everybody would come to him and make jama'ah with him he went with him and he made the jama'ah with him al amin rajib said one man to give him sadaqah so what is the best option for the person when he comes to the masjid when it is prayed is to go home or pray on his own you want to have jama'ah, pray at home. Or go out to the, one of these rooms here, in this masjid, and make a jama'ah. But in this masjid, fitna, after maghrib. This person, his voice is beautiful. I only want to show his voice. Every time he comes to the jama'ah, this imam, he's on time. So he hasn't got the opportunity to lead. <laughs> Nobody knows about his voice. I'll tell you what, I'll come late. <laughs> when the people is finished, I'll make my own jama'ah at the back. And the people will hear my voice. And then, oh, mashallah, wow, do we? Drona. And then the people will say, oh, his voice is much better than this horrible Imam Obama. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, we will delay not to come to the first jama'ah. Do <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. And then finish, we will make our own jama'ah. And that's what happened. And that's why Imam is Shafi. Al Imam Abu Hanifa and Al Imam Malik. Three Imams, not allowed to make Jama'at to Jama'at. Only Imam Ahmed in one of his sayings, because it's a narration of Imam Ahmed, is his saying. So, Imam al Shafi said, Fihi shakkun li asa jama'a sattah. And when you make Jama'at to Jama'at, you are breaking the most important decision in Jama'at. So he said, If they have finished, it's better for me. Ahabu ilayh. If they prayed or rather on their own, they would not disturb the class or other things. And this is controversial. Okay? Don't pray in the Jama'ah. Allah Musta'a, when I teach in some of the masajid, I can't teach. Especially when my teachings after Maghrib or Maftar Isha. People, Alhamdulillah, either I'm going to raise my voice onto him, or he's going to raise his presentation onto me, but I have to stop the class until he finishes his prayer. I have to. Now, follow. He said about the Jama'ah, about the Jama'ah, 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 the Jama'
we couldn't have that twice. Mm -hmm. But for you to look at the timetable, mm, I come to the second Jumu'ah, that's not correct. You have to come to the first. And I'll give you an example. In Masjid Kingston, there is two Jumu'ah. They made an expansion to the Masjid, still two Jumu'ah. I'm asking them. Why have second Jumu'ah? Second Jumu'ah, is it second Jumu'ah, is there a lot of people? It's a very few people. It's not allowed. Those few people who could just push them in. Why then the Imam is using full line? These lines, I don't like them. You know these lines? I don't like them. Because they make the people stop on that. Please move, they don't move. If they didn't have these lines, okay. they didn't close to each other. So if the Imam, he was clever enough, he would start making the people what? Having three quarters of a line. Three quarters. He would say about two, three lines at the back. Thirty people. If he's more clever than, oh, lots of people, make two. Wallahi, in Kingston, I will know that I will fit them if I'm an Imam. I'll make them pray beside me. On my right, on my left, my Imam. So I've got a row, different row as well. So row, plus rows. But if it's too many, too many, too many, too many, then I will make the two Jumu'ah. But I make the two Jumu'ah according to what I need, but not to set it. So the people that come to the second Jumu'ah, especially the second Imam Khatib, is better than the first Khatib. Problem. Ah, it's Khatib, I'll come to that one. I'm not going to come to the first one. What do you believe? Take one Jum. First one takes precedence of the second one. First one is the one with the legal. Okay. Second one is, comes legal if there is people. Okay. Has to be like that. Otherwise, Allah <laughs> Mustaan. <laughs> Ipre in uh, Richard Park Mosque. How many Ipre do they have there? Five. 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 I can't understand what type of mentality these people have. Next to them is called Regent Park. Nobody comes to it in the morning. All they have to do, take a permission. All of them can fit what? One Jama. One Jama. Regent Park is enough for thousands. Big park. In Birmingham, they made the right move. The council now, they can't stop it. <laughs> it started with 40,000, that's the beginning. Two years ago. Now it's more than 80,000. SubhanAllah. That's the power. The power of the unity. Ooh, 80,000 together. You never thought there was 80,000 in Birmingham. <laughs> People that come to the Birmingham, have you seen them? Alhamdulillah. <coughs> SubhanAllah. Have you seen the people who pray eat prayer in Russia? In Moscow? SubhanAllah. Millions? Yeah. In one prayer? SubhanAllah. Millions? It's not in Mamas yet. No, they will, they will block the whole streets. Imagine like the whole of Poplar and Whitechapel, Muslims. You've seen that video which is passing, which is, by the way, is about my limb. The guy who was disbeliever, um, non Muslim. Um, You've seen that dirty man. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the, the dirty man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Subhanallah. No. It reminds me of the verse, Die with your rage. <laughs> Subhanallah. When he showed the video, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's a Muslim country. <laughs> not just Muslim country, Muslims abide to their religion, mashallah. And this guy is just Muslim, like Malin. It's something Malin, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. MashaAllah, women there with hijab and everything. He didn't dare to put himself there. He would have done it, he would have finished. <laughs> if he showed himself, he would have finished. That the brother would be beat him up. Was he recording this? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. he, this is one school, Britain. Mm. So, what is Britain for him? <laughs> what? Anything but Islam. Islam is a foreign religion for Europe. Do you understand me? Mm. This is one called. Why? Why is it, what, what sort of Britain? I mean, Britain is only what for what? What sort of what do you want? Skin or you talking about color eyes? You talking about religion? Talking about what? This is one's called Britain. So you want Britain what? The other side with tattoos and and a purse. Is that Britain? Which one do you want? The Britain, the one who are people who will not rob you, who will not spit at you. I said Britain. What do you want, Britain? Well, what's that Britain in your mind? If I met this guy, I'd say, I'm funny. <coughs> Who had rubbish you fed, fed into your mind? These are the societies that when you live next to them, you don't need police. They'll be the police for you. Come to them and see how they got together. How they are beautiful to each other. Lots of people who wrote about Islam against the deen, they ended up Muslim. Mm -hmm. One of them just recently. <laughs> yes, subhanAllah. A member of parliament. You see it? Yeah. Very highly critical of Islam, Quran. And he is now Muslim. SubhanAllah. From 100 degrees like that. <laughs> 
so the other people will be enraged now. How can he become a Muslim? This person who was going to write against the Quran, now he's become a Muslim. Allah's deen, it's not ours. If it's for us, <laughs> we've been finished. It's Allah's deen. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Wallahu mutim nurihi walau kari al kafir." Allah will establish His deen regardless of those people that don't like it. He's gonna give it. He's gonna give the power to us. The destiny is for us, not for us, for the deen. So he hooks himself to the deen. He's power. Otherwise, you're failing. Allah Taala, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Alhamdulillah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa taqwa Allah.